really this conference this will now be recorded. And, and really, really thank you, Hamid, for joining up for, you know, kind of very committed and also what we call consistency. Perfect. Okay, let's go for the next question. And Hamid is the winner for this question. And the second question is, yeah, this. I hope you already know the answer. This is this is not this this very infamous question. If an electric train is moving uh, north at 100 meters per hour and the wind uh, is blowing at, to the west at 10 meters per hour, which way does this move? Okay. Uh, you know who am I? Electric. <laughs> it doesn't have smooth. Okay. Any 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 other answers other than that? Hmm. That's it. Everyone is in the same lane. Like I want to see like out of the box. Hmm, no smoke. Okay, I'll give you the answer. It's absolutely, yeah, there is, for an electric train, there is no such kind like smoke coming up. Okay, so let me see the winner. So I know these are very, very lame questions that are coming up, but I really want to do this. <laughs> so you know who I am. I really, really don't know who are you, but I'm so fascinated to know who is that. But electric <laughs> train. Uh, oh, yes, perfect. You know who I am. And let's go to the next question. Okay, this is going to be a little tricky. Mm -hmm. What was that? Uh, Ayush, so the one twist for you is uh, you are you are only replying to organizers. The thing you got to reply to privately, okay? <laughs> You just make the change that reply to everyone instead of making the organizer so that others could also see your replies. Okay. Oh, any other answers? It's really a kind of tricky one. Okay. Only three answers I have seen there. Uh huh. But mm -hmm. what would be the answer? All right, so I'll reveal the answers for now. So it's uh, Madagascar. And the thing is, uh, Tanvi Tanvi is the one who replied it first. But the, but one tricky thing here, uh, he used the misspelling. Like the spelling was really wrong. So he used K instead of C. So I'm not sure. So I'm not going to judge anything because of the spellings because I do a lot of spelling mistakes all the time. So, okay, that's Mar Madagascar. And okay, uh, let's go for the next one. This is very, very, very easy among all of them. And this one is just to test how well uh, your kind of, a, you know, solar system knowledge is all, okay. I wanna see a specific date and that stuff, okay. I wanna see like the answer should be like days, how many days, okay. All right, 365.25 days, one year, one year. Perfect, you all know this, amazing, okay. So my intention is just to check like how 365 days and it has is, is like a very, very specific answer. So there is a similar question related to this next one. Okay, and for this question, Ayush, Ayush, the main, I mean, the host of the day and the speaker who is right for the first, uh, has become the first for this question. And uh, let's go for the next one, okay. This is kind of tricky and okay. In a year, in a year, seven months have 30 days, yes, and some uh, have, okay, you go ahead. Paul. <laughs> I, I absolutely thought that I'll be winning for this question. I'm, I'm really, really bad about it. I felt really bad for now. I'm so much disappointed because <laughs> I'm the first person when I see the question, I thought it's only one, that's February. <laughs> but you guys are really amazing, such smile, really, really, okay. So yes, it is. 25 days, 28 days is all of the months and it's 12. Yeah, so Akash, you, are, you belongs to my category, man. Okay, so 30, 28 days can be found in each month, right? So it's not only specifically for February, like it's, it's for every month. So 12 months are all perfect. And who is the winner for this question? Like, that smart person. Uh, Ayush again, okay, Ayush. 
It's really surprising to see this. Uh, okay, and let's see who's gonna do this costume. And I, I took really, really a lot of time and I went up with very wrong answers and you know, you just see this. Okay, you just need to spot that particular emoji in that image. Okay, what was that? We just need to say the name of the object, okay? If you found any smiley, you can say there are some smileys, like just like that. Hmm? What was that emoji? Okay, this is gonna be game changer, I guess. Shy? Um, okay, let, let me see, coming up. Dislike maybe? Mm -hmm. Uh, are you just thinking box now? Okay, and thumbs down. Mm -hmm. And first emoji, what was that? Fist emoji, okay, sorry. Mm, shock, cool. <laughs> well, let me reveal the answer for this now. And it's actually, uh, there are very, you know, a lot of emojis in this picture, but specifically, you know, you gotta be really specific about uh, seeing it up, but the answer is this one. The ball okay so it's specifically ball because that is a you know you have to match it with the exact emoji that you see in social media everywhere right maybe in whatsapp maybe in instagram or wherever it is you can see this one as constant okay when you see for the face it changes it changes the full stuff and changes the face or the thumbs down but the specific answer for this question uh, unofficial answer for this <laughs> is that ball okay i see kuro is the one who answered like really good um yeah, of course, it changes in the platform, but baseball, not most of the times, okay? I don't agree. <laughs> I'm really sorry for that, but okay, let's go for the next question to see for this. Okay, and congratulations, uh, Kuro, <laughs> in my perspective for now. Okay, let's see this. Um, I think you guys can really answer it well. It's called the emoji. That's that specific one. Hmm? What was that emoji? <laughs> you know you gotta be very specific about it you just need to see what what that exact emoji that you can find in social media networks okay i'll give you a hint you, you can find it in whatsapp all right all right i'm gonna say the answer for now so it's the sunglasses exactly what what uh, a lot of you are answering so i can see the emojis are also coming up but i'll go for the first answer who said it it's again the Kuro. Uh, yeah, Kuro, again, you are it. Yes, exactly. So that's the sunglasses. So you can see kind of ex uh, exact way of putting it down into the picture. Fine. Okay, so this is the last question. And I don't I don't actually have a track of all your winnings and loses, but I'm really sorry. That's not the intention. So I just want to come to a little conclusion that uh, this specific questions and all the quiz sort of thing is only to kind of, you know, uh, have such interactions with you. Okay to just build that kind of uh, a culture where you can actually open up your chat box and put everything that you think of, right? <laughs> That's the whole intention of the session. Sorry, it's the whole intention of this particular quiz. And, and also, we are also waiting for some other people along with you, the, uh, you know, the student fellas, to join up in the session along with you. So it's 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 done and the quiz is done and I hope you really like it. If you want, if you want, if you want this quiz, I'm very happy to share with you as well. <laughs> I'm really sorry for the whole name questions but i think i made you have uh, i actually help you to have a little fun with that okay so and before i give it over to ayush i just want to show you one thing is an url okay bit.ly slash qa and flutter okay okay i'm, I'm just uh posting in the chat box Okay, so go ahead, take this uh, BAT shortened URL, like bat.ly forward slash QA hyphen flutter. QA stands for question and answers hyphen flutter. So this platform by Slido, where you can actually go ahead and type all your questions anonymously or anonymously or anyhow, anywhere. Okay, you just need to open that URL and ask your questions here. Okay, at the end of the session or maybe in between, whenever the whenever Oish feels free to you know, answer those questions, he will be going ahead and answering all the questions. So uh, to just maintain such distant uh, variation from the chat box to the uh, Q&A section, we have this URL. So go ahead, bit.ly forward slash QA hyphen flutter. 
Okay, you just go ahead, open it up, and feel free to ask any questions that you wish. And now I I want to make a little thing like Ayush is one among the people that I know who is really really fascinated about uh, Flutter. Okay, so uh, I don't I don't want to say he's like a really amazing Flutter developer. He's like a pro, of course he's a pro, but I want to say he's so committed about it, even though he has a lot of uh, other things, he worked for some of the roles, he's a backend engineer, but a lot of things are there, but I see the consistency and the constantness over a particular technology only with Ayush. Okay, you can go ahead, Google out Ayush Shaker Platter, you can find a platter of resources, maybe his medium, you know, that was like higher ranked medium pages and all the blogs he had written and few Instagram videos, which are so fascinated about his development technologies. I mean, all the skills and apps, everything. All right. So such an amazing person is with us today to teach us how to begin the journey of Flutter and also or any other queries that you are beginner or intermediate or whoever you are. So raise your questions up in this form, bat.lv forward slash QA hyphen Flutter. Go ahead and also feel free to do, you can, you can unmute yourself and express things to Ayush as well. So over to you, Ayush. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me actually. And as you rightly pointed out, uh, first of all, uh, am I audible to everyone? I mean, you can just give me a quick heads up in the chat. Okay, thank you, thank you, that will be all. Um, so I see that we have a very healthy attendance today. We have 33 people taking out their time from a Friday evening. That's, that's not something you see every day. I mean, Friday evening, seriously guys, get a life. Uh, anyway. So, yeah, as you know, taking apart the splendid introduction uh, that my friend just gave about me, you can just call me a normal Flutter developer. And that is what everyone is in this community, not uh, not just me or not just any other Google developer expert in Flutter from India or abroad, even the chief engineer in the Flutter team, even the product manager of the Flutter team, all of them, the developer relations manager of the Flutter team, all of them call themselves a general, a normal Flutter developer, a normal member of the Flutter community who is always ready to help others. And that is what makes Flutter such an amazing technology to work with, among other factors, of course. So as my friend correctly pointed out uh, a few seconds ago, and he did go back on his word saying that the point of this session, uh, the point of that quiz was to, you know, uh, give you a hands-on uh, interaction ease out the mood, ease out the entire, you know, the aura surrounding an, a webinar or a technical seminar sort of thing. So yeah, that is the whole point of the session. It is not just about the quiz, it is actually the whole point of the session. So I'll just quickly tell you how the session is going to progress. First of all, I have prepared a deck, yes, and I will tell you why. I normally do not like decks quite a lot, but this time I did prepare one. I did spend around uh, 20, 25 minutes on it. I will tell you why, because this is really fascinating. Apart from that, um, we will spend the, I will try to save around 50 to 20 minutes of the time so that, uh, you, you know, I can answer uh, more of your questions and we can make this more interactive. So I will ready to proceed. Can you give me a quick heads up? On the chat, yes. Okay, let's go. Um, Teja, can you please uh, stop sharing your screen maybe so I can? Uh, you can, you can, yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, guys, uh, this is something that I should have done before this, but uh, I might have to leave the meeting and come back again because on Mac, if you install a new software, then you need to allow it, uh, the screen permissions. So I'll be just be back in a minute, okay? Sorry for this. Sure, Ayush. Yeah, we'll be waiting for you. We'll be having some fun. Okay. Okay, guys. So there was a, a little issue with Ayush's screen. He uses Mac. Yeah, he's back, I guess. Okay, guys. Am Bye. I back now? Yep, yep, you are. Um, but I don't know why the screen option is still, it's, I think it's disabled for me. Teja, I think you can give access to it. But I gave 
No, I think I joined again, so I think you need to give it again. Oh, OK, OK, one minute. Yes, you are an organizer now. OK. Perfect, we can see your screen. Just a second. Yeah, is my screen visible? Yes, 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 totally. Uh, you can also see the slides, right? Teja, uh, can you see the slides now? Yes. 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 Totally. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's proceed. Um, the title of the session, as you would have uh, read already in the emails and on Twitter and on Instagram and on other social media platforms, probably, is a step forward with Flutter, and it is actually the start of a very amazing and a very fruitful and productive journey. If you want to continue with it, obviously. So. A little bit about me. I am. My name is Ayu Shekhar. I am currently working as a backend developer with a pre-product stage uh, startup based out in New York. I work remotely, and yeah, I'm a Flutter developer. I like to do cool things with Flutter. That's mostly it. And uh, before we proceed, there is one amazing thing about this presentation. That is this template. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but you have seen. But if you have seen any conference talks or if you have seen any professional talks given by uh, Google developers in Google IO or some other hi fi conferences, then you see these amazing templates on the slides and you wonder how do they make these. I've been trying to get my hands on uh, you know one of these templates for quite a while now and finally I did so thank you organizers I will definitely keep this and edit this for my future conferences as well um, before we begin there is one important thing because first things first uh, whenever you tweet about the session please do mention these two Twitter handles one is the DSC Twitter handle for Satyabhama Institute of Science and Technology, and the other one is for me. Okay, so now that we have the important things out of our way, what is Flutter? I mean, I have I, in the description that I had given, we I had mentioned that we'll be going through the three different uh, interrogative words: what, how, and why. Right. So, what is Flutter? Some people, some people will tell you that Flutter is an SDK. Some people will tell you that it is just a UI framework. Some people will tell you, no, it is a utility. Some people will tell you, many people do have the misconception that it, that it is a language. They, uh, you know, in many uh, conferences, in many videos, articles, they'll write, you can either use Java, Kotlin, or Flutter to develop. So that is completely an incorrect sentence. Flutter is a UI framework. It is a SDK. It is a uh, toolkit or should i say generalizing everything i like to call flutter an ecosystem so flutter is not just fancy widgets which are rendering at uh, high frame rates on the screen flutter is not just an amazing toolkit that makes developers lives easy flutter is not just not a language definitely not a language it is not 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 just it is not a language Flutter is all of it. Flutter is the experience that you get while developing apps which are beautiful, which are smooth, which are faster, and which run on a variety of different platforms. As you can see in this image, I actually picked this up from TechCrunch. So Flutter, using Flutter code, you can run the applications that you build on the mobile platforms, that is the Android and iOS platforms. You can compile them down to a static website. Okay, so you can actually create a website with Flutter. After that, going one step ahead, you can also create a desktop software with Flutter for Mac OS, Linux, Windows, you name it, Flutter has it. It even runs in Chrome OS. And now going one step ahead, we can even run Flutter apps on embedded devices. We can run Flutter apps on wearable technology like the uh, Android uh, OS for 
watch i think it's called watch os or something i'm sorry i'm not sure about that but yeah you can even run flutter on wearable technology there are videos and articles of people running flutter apps on raspberry pi on a lot of different other platforms so the possibilities with flutter are endless and today we are going to uh, you know explore some of the initial code some of the initial factors some of the initial aspects about flutter and how you can get started with the same first things first flutter uses the dart language that was developed in house by google flutter is a product by google and dart is also a product by google it was developed in house in the google hq and dart is heavily inspired by java it is heavily inspired by javascript it is an amazing language it has its vices but then which language doesn't so yeah that is the language so if at all you need to tell someone that which language you are coding in when you're developing in flutter it is dart and not flutter so just clearing up the air about that now let's establish some credibility i mean i will go on to rant about how good and amazing flutter is but then if i do not give you some stats if i if all those arguments are not backed by some numbers then what is it worth so according to a report that was published on medium by tim sneath the product manager of flutter about two days ago in the last quarter itself around 2 million plus developers use flutter to build applications 2 million plus and just to tell you flutter is not even in the version 2 of its stable build we are yet to reach version 2 we are yet to reach for flutter version 2.0 and as of this point also more than 2 million plus people are using flutter every quarter so that's amazing apart from that flutter has 91063 stars on github as of you know about 40 minutes ago this might have increased in the past 40 minutes but yeah 91000 stars on github it is it was in the top 10 yes it might even have come up in the top 5 i don't really know you can go check it out after this session so yeah 91000 stars on github god i know how much pain it had it had been for me to you know even cross 100 stars on a repository and this repository has 91000 stars now something that is very controversial but something that is you know very a very strong example of how of why flutter community is so amazing if you go on to the flutter uh, github page and you go over to the issues tab then you will see that it says 5000 plus now on the issues tab github has a maximum limit of 5000 so if for any repository there are more than 5000 issues it just adds a plus with the prefix so many there are many developers out there there are many people out there who, who, who try to make fun of flutter saying that this is the only uh, repository this is the only thing on github that has maxed out the that number that higher limit but then when you go over to the issues tab you will see the second number that is the number of issues that have been closed and that is 21,000 plus. Now, the Flutter team working at Google is a very small and a very compact team. They do not have a very huge or a large team. They're a very small, compact team who work tirelessly to build Flutter and make Flutter better for the, for the developers. So it is nearly impossible for them to have closed 21,000 issues, right? It is nearly impossible. The only way this has happened and the only way this is possible is because of the Flutter community. Now, I don't know at what experience level you are into programming, but the more you go into programming, the more you go, you know, the more you dive deeper into the world of development, you will sooner or later realize the importance of community, be it through answers on Stack Overflow, be it through replies on Twitter, be it through, you know, sorting out of or closing of issues on github be it any kind of support that the developers that the other people who are using the same technology will provide you on, across different channels on the internet you will realize that because if i code for eight hours a day around two to three hours are spent on you know trying to find out the answer to a problem the answer to, uh, to a challenge that i'm facing and that is only possible i may only 
able to find the solution because someone out there on the internet is there to help me out with it and there are very less technologies with such vibrant communities as flutter i'm not saying it is the best but yes it is very vibrant it is very uh, exciting encouraging and it pushes you to be a better developer to be a better version of yourself so yeah that is why i included these numbers but all of this is about flutter right but why should you use it i mean why should you use flutter what are the advantages what does flutter do there are three words that describe flutter the best one it is fast and by fast i do not mean like normal fast i mean crazy fast it ensures that your apps on mobile run at 60 fps to 120 fps so if you are you know going planning on buying those new high end smartphones with the 120 hertz display you can rest assured that your flutter apps will not jitter on those screens they will perform just as fluidly and as perfectly as they do on lower resolution lower uh, refresh rate screens the performance is amazing second the development the whole process of development is very smooth now here comes the importance of the community again because flutter in itself is a very amazing tool they offer some amazing documentation they um, offer amazing tooling and tool set that helps you you know build applications very easily but because of such a vibrant community that is there around flutter we have a lot of extensions a lot of tools a lot of utilities that help you in you know uh, making the process the entire process of development very smooth and very fast third flutter development is easy and again not normal easy or slightly tough easy it is crazy easy because in the first you might have a learning curve it is there for every new technology for that you plan on learning but for flutter it is very less i will tell you why because there is only for the first advantage here is that there is only a single language that you have to learn right there you are not going to learn xml differently for the ui as in the case of android you are not going to learn xml uh, separately for the ui and then java or kotlin for the logical part of it you are not going to learn you know two or three different languages for ios like swift uh, well nowadays you have swift ui and jetpack compose and all that stuff but yeah you get the point because so the use of a single language for ui and logical part makes it very easy and there are a lot of other factors which may make it very easy as well now there is there is this very famous quote very famous quote it says i love spending hours of time waiting for the gradle builds it fascinates me do you know who said it no developer ever if you find any developer who has said this quote please get him in touch with me i would like to you know extend my hearty greetings and yep said no developer ever and this is what flutter saves you so that was it from my deck okay that was the theoretical part that i wanted to just rule out of the way because i know that all of you are technology students are all of you are technical students and you would love to see the code right um i think i lost the chat somewhere okay so no it's not a thank you yet sorry yeah let's jump onto the code okay but before that let me see if there are any questions uh... Well, Akash has said something about 100. I'm not even getting 10. Um, what is that? Yeah, Ayush. Yeah. Can you see my screen? There was a question uh, from Antariksh. Okay, so please go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, 
anything related to connecting with me i'll just put it to the end because uh, we have less time left okay uh, apart from that if you have any questions related to what i just talked about about the theory of clutter you can just post it out there we'll spend the last 15 minutes going through it okay perfect yeah you can start sharing your screen yeah Okay, uh, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, normally what people do during conferences or do, during seminars or during presentations is that they have, have something which is already prepared, already ready to run, ready to go. But because I was so confident and I, I was brave enough to do this, I am going to create a new Flutter project from scratch right now and I will run it and show it to you how fast flutter is all you need is a somewhat stable internet connection because that is something that flutter requires okay so i hope the terminal is visible to you this is a very simple example okay before this let me do a very simple command which will show you the status of flutter on my machine right now i am on the stable channel so there are different channels if i if we have time we'll go through that that also as to what are channels and uh, how do they work so right now whenever uh, you have installed flutter and whenever you want to see if it is working properly or not you can just run this command flutter doctor and it will show you all these different configurations it is basically a quick check of your flutter installation so let's just do something like this okay i've run a simple command that will generate a new flutter project i've named it my example it is running the flutter pub get command that installs dependencies and i think it's done yep done so i will just switch over to the directory and open the same in visual studio code I have the project up. You can see that Flutter automatically generates some, you know, uh, boilerplate code for you. So let me just run it first. I will run it on iOS because another thing that most uh, people do during presentations is that they have it run on Android. Now, all that is great, but sometimes you might want to see the iOS version in action as well because if all the tutorials and everything is in Android, then eventually when you're going to develop in iOS, you are going to feel a bit out of place and plus iOS looks cool. So yeah. So while we wait for it to launch, the first launch usually takes a bit more time than the subsequent launches. But yeah, so while this is happening, let me just quickly see the status of the questions okay uh antariksh pratham has asked me hi i wish i wanted to know more about writing articles on medium can i connect with you on linkedin sure antariksh um you can connect with me on linkedin just search for ayu shekhar i hope you'll get me so the build is still in process now let me show you some resources that you can use for learning Flutter. The first is the Dart website. I mean, yes, Flutter is awesome and good, but you need to know the Dart language to be able to code in Flutter, right? So, I mean, just look at the website. It's so beautiful. Why would you not want to code in Flutter? Why would you not want to write code in Dart? I mean, I looked at this website in the first go and I fell in love and I'm sure the same would have happened to a lot of you also today. So yeah, the Xcode build is done by the way. And how much was it? 36.5 seconds. So yeah, in a matter of couple of minutes, I think we have created a new Flutter app and we have it running on our iOS simulator. This is the boilerplate application that is given to you by the Flutter team. So if you click on this plus button, it will increase the counter. So that is 
all that it does and if i show you the simplicity of this if you you know just ignore the comments if i just delete the comments you will see that the number of lines that it took to write this application is so less is so less because in just a few lines of code in like what is this i mean 75 lines and in those 75 lines because with flutter you get a feature for auto indent and you have uh, your uh, trailing brackets and commas on in different lines you know in approximately 30 lines of code you have written your first application in flutter that's it i mean it's a fully functional application you can perform an action and the state will get updated in the application and and all that is happening within 30 lines of code and one of the most interesting features and one of the, one of the most sought after features in flutter is its ability to hot reload now what i mean by that is this so you can see flutter demo home page written over here right and flutter demo home page is written over there in the app also now if i were to change this and click save then you will see how fast the changes were made inside the application this is what is called hot reload and the amazing part about this is that it is a stateful hot reload what i mean by that is that whenever you save the changes to a file what flutter will do is that because of its amazing and awesome tooling it will just push that part of the updated code snippet onto the application onto the app and it will show the changes in real time without hampering the state of the application so let me give you a real use case for example if there was something like authentication in my app wherein you needed to log in to actually proceed to the dashboard and let us just consider that this was the dashboard of the, my app then usually what happens on other platforms like nowadays hot reload is everywhere but flutter was the first to bring it so what would happen on other on other platforms on other technologies is that if you change something like this it will restart completely but in flutter it will still retain the authentication state of the application so while developing you do not you do not have to again and again authenticate yourself you are there on the screen that you want to edit without actually hampering the entire flow of the application this is something that we call hot reload so in this in fact in this example also if i change this text you do not see this counter resetting right this counter is still at 7 i can increment it to 8 9 and 10 it, and it will still not change if i keep on changing the static text so the app is not completely restarting this feature is called hot reload another thing now sometimes you might make changes that you would want to reflect in the new state of the application you would want to refresh the state of the application in that case what you can do is that just click on this green icon and it will restart the app that is called hot restart which removes the previous state of your application and restarts the application completely so you have both the utilities and you can use both of them depending on your use case now this was for ios you have seen it running on ios and i'm sure you would believe me when i say it would also run on android okay now but as i told you flutter is a truly cross cross platform framework it is a truly cross platform technology so i think this presentation would not be complete if i didn't show you that flutter can also run on web and desktop so let me just quickly switch over to my terminal again and i have now as i told you i will tell you about the concept of channels in flutter right so what happens is that there are certain channels in flutter one is the master channel the second one is the dev channel third is the beta channel and the fourth one is the stable channel now since flutter is a nascent technology it is a very young technology as you would have seen in the social media posts it is under rapid and active development 
Now people are con are continuously working to make Flutter better, to implement more features, to squash more bugs, to make it better and more stable. And that is what these channels signify. So the master channel is the latest build of Flutter. If you want to use all the new cutting edge features in Flutter and all the new features that have not been completely tested for production use, then you can switch over to the master channel. It is very easy to switch actually. You can just do Flutter channel master and press enter and it will switch over to the master channel. Now after the master channel is the dev channel, the DEV channel. Whenever there is a certain Flutter build in the master channel that is seemingly stable, that is seemingly, a, you know, it is a version, for example, the master channel is currently at maybe 1.12.3 one three something okay and the developers in the flutter team feel that okay this is a considerably stable channel and let's promote it okay let's allow more people to use it so they will push that build of flutter onto the dev channel now you can rest assured that dev will be more stable than the than the master channel it will have less bugs less issues probably less features but yes it will be more stable. Now, every once in a while, when they feel, when the Flutter developer team members feel that, okay, this build in the dev channel is really stable, okay? It can be used by even more people. Then they will promote it to the beta channel, the BETA, the beta channel. And usually the beta channel is a good option because if it is a proper blend, of all the new features, all the exciting features that you may want to try and a very solid ground of stability that it has, okay? So that is the beta channel. And finally, the stable channel of Flutter that I'm currently working in because before the session, I was working on my company's uh, app. So yeah, that has to be done with the stable channel because this is the most stable version of Flutter with the least issues, the least bugs and the least unexpected behaviors here and there so i can rest assured that i will that whatever happens in the code if there is a mistake it is my mistake and not flutter's mistake okay so these uh, this this was the concept about uh, the different channels about flutter in flutter and uh, the next thing you need to know is that flutter for web is currently in the beta channel Okay, it is. It has not been promoted to the stable channel. Last Google I/O, that is last May in 2019, it the Flutter for Web was released as a technical preview, and uh, since then it has come a long way. The performance has increased a lot, which you will see now. And uh, yeah, that's more like it. Okay, and so Flutter for Web is in the beta channel, and Flutter for Desktop is still in early developer preview okay it is not ready for production use at all so it is still there in the master channel it has not been promoted to any other more stable channels so in order to show you the app running on the web and desktop platforms i have the master channel also configured on my system you can do that with the instructions that are given on the official flutter website flutter.dev right now I will just quickly create this command. If you try it, F master, it will not work on your system unless and until you create an alias for it. I, ha I have it separately configured. F master create and maybe DSC example. See, a new version of Flutter is available. Now, you didn't see that when I created the my example app for the mobile, right, using the stable channel. Now, that was because stable releases are, stable releases, you know, are released, are actually put out for the public once in a long, long time. But master channel is regularly updated almost like every week or so. So you have all the amazing features. Um, as you can see in these details, this project was created using the channel master, wherein the version was 1.18. And previously in the stable channel, you would have seen that the version was 1.12. So yeah, 
i hope that's better now so this is a new flutter project that was created using the master channel and hence i can run it on both my desktop that is mac os as you can see on the screen and the web and just to show you that it is actually capable of running both i will quickly do this when i do f master devices that is an equivalent command to flutter devices you will see that i have mac os as a device and chrome as a device okay so let me just quickly try to run this i will run it on mac os for now you can change the device that you want to run it on by clicking over here and if i run it you will see that this will launch even faster than the mobile application this is even faster than the mobile app and you will see a desktop build of the same boilerplate application that you saw for mobile it should be visible any moment now please don't disappoint me okay i'll start crying in a corner any minute now well while that builds we can probably explore the second website that is the flutter website the official flutter website is uh, hosted at flutter.dev this is also a beautiful website you just fall in love with the website it has a very comprehensive documentation you can go over the documentation it is very comprehensive very helpful in fact a lot of times some things that you do not get on stack overflow some things that you do not get on twitter or other support platforms you will be able to comprehend using the official documentation okay so yeah i am not disappointed the desktop build is ready and you can see that it is the exact same application on desktop okay if you click it it runs and it is as smooth as it was on mobile right it is completely smooth completely fine yeah it runs perfectly on desktop as well this is a desktop app this is not a mobile app now the final thing let's stop this and try to run it on web this time you have to choose chrome and then start the debugging session i am just running f i am just clicking f5 it launches flutter on whatever device you selected the default the default device right now that is chrome yeah so just to give you an example of how comprehensive the documentation is you can go to say animation and motion and you will see that for each and every widget so for some of the widgets flutter the flutter team has officially created a lot of videos in their widget of the week series and yeah it's coming up our flutter application running on chrome is coming up this takes a little bit of time to just start to load all the scripts in place but once it is ready it is ready and you can see that this is also smooth as butter it is just flowing through and also responsive so using this you have seen that flutter can run on mobile on desktop and the web with the same code yeah so that was the capability of flutter now let's explore some platforms certain resources that will help you get started and learn flutter okay the first one is definitely the flutter website you should definitely go through you know the getting started guide you can uh, you will get a very comprehensive set of steps that you can use for setting up your environment on your own laptop or desktop and then 
you have different guides as well in fact if you're coming if you are right now you're an android developer and you're coming and you're you know planning on to come to flutter then you have all these documentation all these pages ready that show you how it is related and what are the alternatives of the existing technologies that you have been using inside your existing platform and how you can uh, achieve the same functionality within flutter so it is a very a very amazing website you can go through it completely it will give you a lot of knowledge and if you want uh, you know if you are still not sure about flutter if you want to know who are using it why it why should you take it seriously then you can go to the showcase page and you can see all the big corporate giants who are actually currently using flutter for their existing projects you can see that the new york times is using it uh, you can see that tencent is using this there are a lot of other companies who are using it and people are just so happy in fact dream 11 you would have heard of it it is an indian startup a, an indian unicorn i should say they are also developing an app with flutter in fact they already have an app developed with flutter so yeah that's there apart from that you have these amazing websites called dartpad now this is an online utility which gives you an online compiler wherein you can just play with dart this this can come in very handy when you're actually planning on learning dart this can uh, you know without setting up any environment on your computer you can just go ahead and write your code over here run it it's simple very simple it in fact i think it also allows you to run flutter inside it so if you want to just try out flutter and if you do not want to set up flutter first you can just go to dartpad.dev go to samples on the right and click on any one of these examples and you will be able to see flutter in action you can make changes to this these codes and you will be able to run them right inside your browser without making any configuration now certain interesting things about flutter is that recently flutter has collaborated with codepen so that on codepen web developers please pay attention front end developers especially if you have been using codepen to you know showcase your existing uh, javascript and css projects for sharing what amazing things you develop now you can also host your flutter projects on codepen so if you just open the flutter editor or try a template you will be able to see Flutter is also able to run on CodePen. So you can create some am amazing things and you can share the CodePen with others. In fact, this comes in very handy when you're writing a blog on Medium actually, because if you're writing a blog on Medium, then using uh, the CodePen snippets, the CodePen embeddable snippets, you can embed that content inside your uh, Medium blog and it that way you can show a live demonstration of whatever you want the people to know about flutter okay and yeah this is a very cool example this was i think one a part of the flutter clock challenge which happened recently now this is something very interesting that i wanted to show you um flutter and code pen collaboration is not even two weeks old right now okay it it has not even been 10 days since this collaboration was announced and the community surrounding flutter is so amazing that they have already started making crazy things on this this animation that you see over here this is not a design this is not a gif this is this is not a video this entire design with such smooth performance was created purely with code using flutter you have the code open source right here ready to use you can go through it i know this might be complex at first this is not something that you would want to start with but as soon as you are comfortable building with flutter you can definitely explore the and this proves this is an ultimate proof that there are a lot of possibilities that there are a lot of amazing opportunities for you to explore in flutter now another thing i wanted to show you is this tweet that i saw i think today one of the limitations of flutter is that it is 2d right you cannot create 3d applications with it definitely i think there is a package that allows you to embed you uh, a unity view inside of flutter but then because as i told you the community is so vibrant and so active 
people have customized it now uh, mind you the person who has treated this the person who has created it is not from google is not from the official flutter team they have taken out time of their own and customized flutter to be 3d to be uh, to render three dimensions purely with the flutter code without using unity now this was something which is considered as a limitation of flutter but no more now again this is a very evident example of how the community can do great things and how you can do great things with flutter if you commit to it if you do not stop exploring if you go to google and type let me just show you if you go to google and if you type awesome flutter i think that's easy to remember then you will come to this page by robert felker his username is solido why this page is amazing is because it has a very comprehensive and almost exhaustive list of some of the best resources that are there for flutter websites tutorials beginner advanced how to's videos components uh, ui and a lot of other things in fact you if you need something about flutter there is a very very good chance that you will find it over here so be sure to check out this repository if you want to start learning about flutter also another amazing resource to learn about flutter is the medium publication flutter community there is a medium publication called flutter community and it has i think it has a lot of members it has it had more than 20k around a year ago so now they would have much more so you can go over there check out the different articles you can see my articles over there as well i have a couple of articles over there and you will be able to see a lot of tutorials a lot of how to's a lot of amazing things that people have done with flutter another resource that you would want to check out is if you go to youtube and type flutter then you will be able to see the official flutter youtube channel the interesting thing about of the official youtube flutter channel is that all the videos that are posted over here are mostly very very short okay you will see mostly the duration of these videos is 2 minutes 3 minutes 5 minutes okay mostly and in those 3 and 5 minutes they give you so much of useful information and uh, that you know it is amazing also they have this thing called the boring flutter show uh, i think it would be somewhere over here okay they do not yeah the boring flutter development show which is as real as it gets now why do i say that it is as real as it gets because there are 45 videos of people from the flutter team sitting and coding real world applications sitting and code doing live coding in front of you you know uh tackling errors tackling bugs finding out issues in the framework itself you know banging their head and trying very hard to solve a challenge all of this in real time all of it recorded without editing without cutting anything out now it takes courage as someone who wants as if you know if i have developed an application and i want you to use it i will show you the best version of it so that i can market it well but that is not you know that is not the way how it is for something that you give to developers because you need to be real with developers and that is something that the flutter team has done excellently all of the videos over here would be mostly be you know more than an hour in length but they would definitely be worth it so make sure to check it out apart from that you know i think mostly we are done i could have shown i could have maybe live coded an app for you i could have done a lot of other things but then all of those things would have just given you a brief glimpse of what you can actually explore and i think i did show you a considerable instance of what can be achieved through flutter and yes if you want to explore more if you want to you know really go out there and build beautiful and efficient applications you are free to do so definitely go ahead and do it and lastly i have this final slide that i wanted to show you do you see anything on the slide i don't think you do because it is a blank canvas just like any technology any framework any platform is 
you need to fill it with your creativity because with flutter you get a huge amount uh, an infinite number of possibilities and infinite number of opportunities and just like this blank canvas you can paint it in whatever way you want pun intended hashtag and you know create whatever kind of applications implement whatever kind of functionality do whatever you want right so create this white screen as your blank canvas and play with flutter as much as you want thank you for having me thank you for listening to me this was ayu shekhar and uh, just okay okay i am shaker don't go to the end <laughs> okay you have some more I, time i have i'm not done yet i'm not done yeah. yet just a second <laughs> i i also have to show you because it is mandatory for me to network as well right um, <laughs> you can you can connect with me on twitter i go by the handle iu shaker 17 you can just search for iu shaker most probably you will get me and this is my twitter you can also come follow me on github i usually share a lot of open source code about flutter on github and someone because just because someone mentioned linkedin i have to then show the linkedin also so yeah it's linkedin.com/in/ayushekhar you can just find me by searching and be sure to connect with me i would love to you know help you out with your flutter journey as much as i can sometimes the responses might be late but definitely they will be there so yeah let's go over to the questions now is that okay yeah you should there are really good questions coming up for you so please go ahead with all the questions okay uh there are a lot of questions i see oh there are only 15 oh no problem okay okay guys uh, just a disclaimer if there is a very tough question i might you know try to sneak away try to evade it but i will definitely you know get in touch with you afterwards okay i have scraped data from a website and initially app was okay but now i don't know why it was not showing the data i have scraped um in order to actually specifically help you i would need more details than that but i think the process that you might have followed would be that you had created an api most probably using python wherein you were uh, scraping the data from the web and then you were putting it into some kind of a temporary data storage maybe uh, or a permanent data storage depending on your implementation you would have put it inside a database or maybe you would have cached it in redis or something but and then you exposed it as an api the backend that you created most probably using python you exposed it as an api and then you were using those api endpoints inside the inside your application so if it was not showing the data you have scraped then there can be multiple points of failure the first point of failure that you need to check is that if your uh, scraping script that you have written is working correctly or not if it is working correctly then you need to uh, know if your the data storage that you have kept on your backend or uh, be it uh, temporary data storage or permanent data storage if is the data getting stored over there or not the third thing is are your api endpoints exposed correctly if yes then you need to check that if the flutter application or any application that you have created that interacts with those endpoints are those api requests and responses uh behaving as they should is the data being received on the app end and if the data is being received on the app end then you need to you know make sure that it is being parsed correctly inside the application and then you are going to present it on the ui so there can be multiple points of failure if you go step by step i'm sure you'll be able to debug the same uh thank you for the question although it was a bit complex for this but yeah next question how about the availability of jobs for flutter developers i knew this was coming oh my god okay so yeah there are less jobs for flutter developers i will not say that there are no jobs for flutter developers because right now i'm doing a job in which i code with flutter so i will not say that there are no jobs available for flutter there are definitely more jobs available for flutter but yes there are very less as compared to native app developers as of now because the industry is slowly and steadily 
evolving and is getting ready to adapt the new technology that is flutter many people have started adapting it in fact uh, recently i was looking for a job and i put out a tweet i the uh, response was really amazing there were a lot of startups uh, from bangalore from pune who reached out to me and wanted to have me as on board as a flutter developer so yeah most of i won't say the existing companies or the existing corporates are switching over to flutter it will take time for that paradigm shift to happen but right now uh, many of the upcoming startups and many of the early stage startups are making the switch to flutter because of how efficient it makes their development process and because of the uh, economical advantages as well right because as uh, if you're uh, hiring two different teams for two different platforms or three or four different platforms or three or four different teams you obviously have to spend a lot more money so with flutter you can do that cost saving and have an efficiency in development as well so happy developers plus less expenditure i think that's a very competitive combination for any company to have and yes many more companies will definitely adopt flutter in the coming days right now the numbers are less but they do exist so if you are a very good flutter developer if you have some open source code available if you have uh, you know made a prominent presence in the flutter community if you have shown your work and i think that is the case with most of the technologies right uh, i ho i really think that teja would agree that if even if you are using any technology be it python be it javascript anything if you have some projects that you have put out put out or, or in open source if you have your portfolio created if you have put out an effort for yourself then people will tend to recognize it and they will hire you for it so yeah that's the that was a really good question thank you also the freelancing market for flutter flutter is really booming right now everyone wants a flutter freelancer so you can go ahead and try that uh well wisher guys please like the question if you had the same okay there you go i gave you a like um i'll just go quickly with your question how many extensions are you using in visual studio code for the whole setup and the name of the emulator you are using first of all it was not an emulator it was a simulator uh the difference between an emulator and a simulator is that android uses emulator and uh, ios uses simulator well not really an emulator is basically a complete virtual machine running inside your uh, running as a software program inside your uh, pc so that is an android emulator when you actually switch on an android emulator you have the entire android sdk the android operating system running on it but in the case of ios what happens is that you only have a simulation of the actual device you do not have a complete actual device because apple tends to keep it so private and closely held so they do not offer an emulator they offer a simulator but then again from personal experience i can tell you that the simulator is really amazing for ios in fact whatever you see on the simulator is exactly as you see it on the physical device which is something that i cannot really say about android so yes it was a simulator not an emulator it was the ios iphone 11 pro max the simulator um you will only be able to use it if you have a mac uh, and a mac os and mac os how many extensions are you using well that is a difficult question um for flutter i do not have a lot of extensions i have the official flutter uh, and dart extensions that you need to install in order to uh, take full advantage of the tooling that is available for vs code apart from that i do have something called uh, bracket colorizer i think you might have seen it uh, it's called bracket colorizer it uh, gives different colors to the different brackets so that it is easy for you to you know um uh, match them and find out which bracket corresponds to which one apart from that uh, i think these colors that you see over here is by some extension called indent rainbow or something it also does the same thing yeah so you know eventually you will come to know about vs code extensions in fact there are a lot of articles out there about vs code extensions that can uh, help you out with uh, all the essential extensions that you might need so yeah you can go ahead and check out those any great app built in uh, flutter in production any examples yes why not there are many first let me give you an example that the flutter team has been giving since its very first event and uh, 
is called Reflectly. And it is actually very, very, very beautiful. I don't know if you've seen it. It's very beautiful, very. So I will not show you the complete video. You can go ahead and see the video yourself. In fact, if you just write Flutter developer story, Flutter developer story, then you will be able to see all the amazing apps that uh, have been uh, that are in production have been built with Flutter, and the Flutter team has officially showcased them on their website. So yeah, one of the examples is Reflectly. I really like Reflectly. Another example because you know self shameless self promotion. Yeah, I will show you one app that I had created. This that is also in production. because I can, because I'm the speaker. Okay, so yeah, Hash Connect, this was an application that I had created. This is completely built using Flutter and Firebase. So this was intended to change how people connect using uh, using uh, using this application uh, in meetups, in physical meetups and tech conferences. So whenever you meet someone, you can just scan their QR code and you will have a persistent link a persistent repository of all the public portfolios and links that they want to share about themselves so you don't have to go ahead and manually you know uh, scavenge their different uh, social profiles to get connected with them separately on linkedin on github on twitter etc etc people can just uh, store all their information on this it will generate a qr code you just scan the qr code and you have a persistent repository of all the connections that you have physically made in a conference so yeah this is also in production you can go ahead and try it out if you want nobody uses it anyway okay so next question what are all the system requirements to use flutter and which programming language is required to code in flutter well were you paying attention i hope you were well which programming language is required to code in flutter as i mentioned there is only uh, one programming language that you are going to use and that is dart d-a-r-t I showed you the official website of it, I think. Yeah, it, you can go ahead and explore this language over here. You can go to the website dart.dev and you'll be able to see the website. Uh, this is the language that Flutter uses. And what are the system requirements to use Flutter? Well, you need to have a normal system, but uh, if you want the complete requirements then you can go ahead like for windows these are the system requirements you can just go to flutter.dev go to docs go to get started just choose which of whichever operating system you are on like for example most of you would be on windows so click on windows and if you go to the system requirements then you'll be able to see what are the different system requirements that you would have that you would need to have for running flutter and I personally recommend that you do not use Android Studio for uh, developing in Flutter. You will need Android Studio for, you know, all the Android tool chain and all those tools that you need for building the Android application or building the APK. But it is recommended that you use VS Code for uh, developing in Flutter. At least I recommend it because if you have a, a laptop or a hardware configuration that is not a beast, then sometimes uh, when using Android Studio, if you're simultaneously, uh, you know, researching in Chrome or stuff, you can run out of memory and it will be really slow. So I would recommend that you use VS Code for developing in Flutter. And these are the system requirements to answer your question. Uh, next one, can I get an internship by learning app development in Flutter? Absolutely. I got my first uh, paid internship, first, actually you know uh, an internship with a considerable pay you with because of flutter and that was in a very early stage at that time and it wasn't even stable that time um, i had got that internship back in december 2018 when later in december 2018 the first stable version of flutter was announced during uh, flutter live so yeah, you can definitely get an internship by learning app development with Flutter. In order to find internships, you can go to LinkedIn, Internshala, and a lot of other websites. Just, you know, go to tech conferences, attend seminars, attend webinars, network with people, and you will definitely find connections or people who are looking out for Flutter developers. And then you can score an internship as easy as that. 
uh, I'm thinking to start. Okay, there was another question. No. Okay, I am thinking to start learning Android app development and make it my career. Should I start with Java and Android Studio or start with Flutter? Now, this is a difficult question to answer. It depends on your personal preference. If you ask me, I had started to do native Android app development back in 2017, but because I didn't find it very exciting and I didn't find it very friendly at that point of time, I left it. Now, just to give you some context, there was no Jetpack Composer at that time. Okay, so I had started it. There was no the, the Kotlin was also in its very early stages at that point of time. So I had just left it out there, and then I went over to become a full stack web developer, and then switched over to Flutter because I had a background in React. Now the circumstances were different for me. The circumstances and the context of the situation will be different for you. So it is up to you to choose uh, if you want to learn uh, native android app development first or if you want to go with flutter now if you are really keen or if you have already made up your mind about uh, going for android app development there is no problem there is absolutely no problem you can definitely go ahead and learn native android app development because flutter is so easy to migrate to because flutter is so easy to include in your existing native android applications as well once you have had a solid background in programming in app development, then whenever you want, if you wish, you can definitely switch to Flutter or vice versa. It is definitely your choice, but make a wise decision. And Flutter is the future. Bye. Uh, sorry, I could not get the use of Flutter channels like Master. Um, you can read more about Flutter release channels. I think we have already crossed the 9 p.m. limit, so I won't go over it again but you can definitely google uh, flutter release channels and the first result that comes up will give you a very good documentation about what are these channels and how are how can they be used how are they different okay uh, google flutter release channels I'm an intermediate developer, but I have a small doubt. How to remove the debug thing from the app? Oh man, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect this question. Okay. Honestly, in the beginning, when I was actually experimenting with Flutter, I really have this one thing I want to remove that debug thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I should have shown this. Okay, my bad. I will just show it to you again. In that fact, was this is so <laughs> so legit question actually. <laughs> yes, that is a very legit question because that in fact to be honest, that was the first question that came to my mind when I had first run my Flutter application. So yeah, kudos. Thank you for the question. Uh, I let me just get this uh running quickly, and I will just show you in real time how it's done. I can show you without the code also, but that it won't be fun, right? And it will run very quickly, so no problem. Um, I think it's almost done, yeah. You see how quickly the build was done? That's how fast Flutter is. The one who was asking about, you know, switching, uh, choosing between Android native and Flutter kind of leaning to flutter you know okay so in the material app that is your root widget inside your flutter uh, everything in flutter is a widget you will be creating a widget then inside that you will be creating a widget inside that you will be creating another widget and because flutter is so developer friendly you will never ever be confused within widgets okay that is my guarantee so inside the material app widget that is your root widget you just have to specify this simple property debug show check mode banner you do not have to remember it just start typing debug and it will automatically come and you just have to set it to false if you set it to false it will remove that debug banner and voila you can go ahead with your development without getting irritated with that debug banner also this is only for debug mode if you uh, actually build it in release mode then you won't see that banner at all okay so but i understand you do not like it i do not like it no one likes it so just set this property as false and you're good to go um can you give us about each widget so we could get some idea 
um sorry bro or not bro i think i need to be more gender neutral and anyways i don't think i can give you an explanation about each widget but yeah you can re definitely read more about it uh, in fact fun fact i should share this right now recently keeping this lockdown into consideration taking this lockdown into consideration the flutter team the official flutter team launched you can see the official flutter medium publication they launched a free introductory flutter course that is uh, taught by angela yu of the london app brewery and it is 10 hours of solid flutter foundation material so yeah you can just go to this page you can uh, google medium flutter introductory course and you will see this first link you can go to this page go through the article and you can get this free course it will take you through all the basics of flutter and yeah that will be very helpful thank you for reminding me uh, how reliable flutter when we want to build high scale business it is very reliable you can go over the case studies and in the showcase page you can go over all the different types of uh, companies all the different businesses who have adopted to flutter and are doing really well hi anonymous hi anonymous flutter is a you are talking about the studies around 20 percent of separation use it in some way uh, i don't think that number is accurate no it, it is not accurate 20 percent of apps in production use it in some way nah not no way okay that number i don't think that number is accurate i may be wrong okay but no 20 percent of apps in production do not use flutter so don't be misguided also as i mentioned flutter is a ui development kit definitely but it is not just a ui development kit okay you can do a lot more with flutter in a lot of more uh, in efficient ways so yeah 20 percent of apps in production where do you get that number okay what are the big companies that use flutter in india uh, one that i mentioned is dream 11 now that is the only one i can remember as of now but why india specifically any uh, you know anything stopping you from uh, going over the case studies abroad or maybe you are looking for job opportunities then as i told you there are a lot of early stage startups who are adopting flutter and coming up with flutter based products so it is definitely a skill that you would want to learn also uh, in this world of globalization and work from home there are a lot of possibilities for you to work remotely work online as i do uh, so yeah you can still learn flutter and work for some company that is not in india that's also a possibility should i learn javascript to use flutter for web well this question is similar to should i you should i learn java to use flutter for android should i learn swift to learn flutter for ios the answer is no you should not i mean it is not a necessity it is not an obligation but if you want to javascript is a beautiful language i mean it is unpredictable definitely but it is a, a beautiful language it is a very multi-purpose and a very robust language so yeah if you want to learn javascript and add it to your skill set that's fine but you do not necessarily need to learn it for using flutter for the web as i just showed you all the code was in dart and it was running on chrome as a website no javascript knowledge required not required but probably maybe a good to have if you're going to do some customizations in flutter itself okay so you should learn javascript if you want to learn it you do not need to learn it no i use dart only okay query select or all i'm sorry i do not understand this question uh so i'm not going to like it okay i do not understand this question i'm sorry um how using async and await affects execution order okay async and await affects execution order i would not go into very much detail but yes flutter is not uh, dart is not multi-threaded so you do not have different threads like you have in java uh, okay so dart only has a single thread you can go ahead and learn more about it online but i don't know how to explain this really 
maybe uh, i can connect with you after the session but yes you can if you just quickly google it you can go over this in fact you can go over this page that's uh, that's the official dart documentation it says asynchronous programming futures async and await you can go over this page there are code labs and there's a lot of documentation available that will give you a lot of information about it in fact this is a very good question otherwise i had not mentioned that dart is a single threaded language not a multi threaded it does not support multi threading thank you for this uh, i was using windows and not able to build app for ios devices yes uh, in order to build app for ios devices in order to debug uh, app for ios devices that can only be done if you are using a mac notebook or a mac computer with mac os on it so yes that is there flutter cannot do anything about it because uh, apple restricts the use of its tools and its uh, sdks to be done only and only on mac os so that is a uh, that is a bummer but what you cannot do anything about it it's when it's apple it's apple right but there is an interesting thing called code magic now code magic is a ci cd tool i don't know how many of you actually know about it but if you just in fact if you google build ios apps in flutter without mac then you will be getting this link how to develop and distribute ios apps without mac with flutter code magic you can definitely go through this link it will show you how you can actually build the ios apps without having a mac notebook or a mac uh, os powered uh, computer but then again you would need an apple uh, developer program membership and all that stuff so it is not really possible to build ios apps on windows or linux for that matter sorry for that i know it sucks uh is there any ways to do animations like we saw in flutter clock challenge if yes then how yes also talking about animations thank you again um i have a talk on animated widgets in flutter uh, and animated widgets in flutter uh, they flutter offers flutter is a great platform for animations it offers a lot of predefined widgets pre built widgets that you can just plug and play inside your application and they will do the basic uh, they are you know uh, sufficient for doing the basic animations inside your applications um, if you want to know more about those animated widgets and how you can use them then uh, please uh, okay a shameless self promotion alert you can go to my twitter handle and you will see the street by gdg chennai uh this event is happening tomorrow from 1:30 to 2:30 pm where i talk about animated widgets in flutter so if you want to learn more about it you can just go and rsvp yourself it is a completely free event and yeah to know more about it to learn more about it you can definitely go to dartpad uh, you, the flutter website go to docs go to widgets catalog and go to animation and motion and over here you will be able to see all the different kinds of animated widgets that are available for you to just plug and play inside your application and do beautiful animations thank you it is a very good question and like as since you specifically mentioned the flutter clock challenge now that is a very complex animation for that you also need a lot of mathematical understanding it is possible because it is flutter but then you also need to build logic for that so once i uh, you know once you have build a solid basic uh, foundation a background for yourself then you can definitely go ahead and explore that code it is definitely overwhelming even for me but once you uh, you know get in the hang of it then you will be able to comprehend it break it down and understand it how those animations work how much days does it take to learn dart to an intermediate level um i cannot tell you individually about dart because i started directly with flutter and i learned dart as much as i needed it uh, for flutter not a single line of code more than that and you know since i went on developing with flutter i also went on you know uh, developing my dart knowledge so yeah um how much days does it take it really depends on you i mean i uh, cruised through a udemy course for flutter in 3 days you know i completed that entire course in 3 days 
for some it might take five for some it might even take one it completely depends on your uh, grasping capabilities and it is okay to take your time but do it well okay all the best uh, which one will you choose among flutter and react native can you specify reason please i will go with flutter any day one the performance second it is not javascript because you do not want to write javascript trust me no javascript well javascript is a beautiful language as i said it is a very powerful language as i said but javascript has a lot of things that are very unexpected about it even people who have been developing in javascript for the past 10 12 years you know explore uh, explore or get to know something new about the language every single day that is not something that happens with dart okay so the very reason that it is written in javascript is something that i would you know by personal preference and by personal choice not go for react native secondly there is something uh, if i uh, talk about it more technically then there is something called uh, a javascript bridge inside uh, the applications okay so the uh, in flutter whatever you write whatever ui that you create is directly converted to the native arm architecture code okay but in react native what happens at least what happened until recently was that all that javascript code uh, there was a javascript bridge in between uh, that the, your code had to pass through in order to be uh, able to be presented natively on uh, the different platforms like android and ios so that caused some performance issues okay so yeah that was there also react native is for android and ios then again you will have to do modifications and use react for web okay and then go for maybe electron for desktop with flutter you get all the platforms in-house so why not go with flutter also fun fact uh, it is kind of a controversial statement but i think the flutter community is better than the react native community you didn't hear it from me please don't tell anyone Dariush, i have one thing yeah uh, for animation there is something called player right i'm sorry player well, that, uh, that has been renamed to something called rive now uh, okay. yes you are right uh, there is a tool called flare there was a tool called flare but now it has been renamed to something called drive it is a tool that you can use for creating custom animations custom graphical animations now this is something that is not a part of flutter but definitely the flutter team endorses it because it is so cool it is kind of complex to get started with but the exports that you get from this uh, tool over here this online tool you can directly embed them inside your flutter application so and you can use this tool to make some crazy animations like this one so if you want to know just uh, go check it out it's called it's hosted at rive.app they continuously work with the flutter team in fact a fun fact one of the flutter team members recently uh left flutter left google to go work at rive so yeah they are very closely connected to flutter his name is uh, matt sullivan by the way i think um yeah if dual boot the mac os is it possible to build for ios devices um so i think you're talking about something called hackintosh if i'm not wrong um yes i think it will be possible but it is very scary and it is very dangerous to actually boot dual boot mac os alongside so do it only if you know what you're doing and if you accept the risks i have never had that kind of a brave heart okay yeah it is possible if you have a mac os um have i answered all the questions i think i have also since uh, i have made some controversial statements i have to put out something see be it react native be it xamarin be it cordova be it flutter be it native android be it native ios be it native web anything all the different platforms have their pros and cons all the different platforms have you know their own efficiency their own communities everything is different but it is just about your personal preference and your personal choice i as a member of the flutter community would like to invite you to explore flutter and see if it is for you 
if you feel that flutter is not for you or not for the project that you're doing or not for the kind of application that you want to make then well and good you should definitely go for a better choice that better suits you you should not go for flutter or you should not learn flutter because everyone else is doing it no you have to get comfortable with the framework or you have to get comfortable with the technology that you're using and as developers it is our nature to explore more and more right and that is the reason why we have uh, infinity plus javascript frameworks coming out every year right so once there was jquery then was there was react angular vue now there's something called svelte nobody can say that you know angular is a better choice or react is a better choice or svelte is a better choice it is up to your personal preference we you should definitely go ahead and try out all the different frameworks if you want to but if you feel comfortable then stick with it it's all completely all right it is completely up to your personal preference your use case and what you need to do with it okay it is not the it is not a matter of superiority or it is not a matter of priority there are pros and cons with every framework so is the case with flutter but if you want to try it out flutter is a very good option okay and now i think we can come to the thank you slide thank you for having me i hope you will tweet about this session please do please tag me and write good things about me thank you <laughs> thank you ayush thank you so much that last statement was actually sounds like oxymoronic and so neutral in the end <laughs> was really good okay so that's it for today's session and if you have any more questions feel free to reach us out in your emails or Instagram or LinkedIn, wherever is it possible, you can just reach us out and we'll make it reach to all you. You can even ping him directly through various source, various mediums that he have shown you. So feel free to reach that. And also I'll take all these resources of the set of valuable resources shared by Ayush. Uh, maybe take, it will, it will take some time. Once I got them, I'll be surely sharing with all the participants. Not to worry about it. And that's pretty much it and thank you thank you thank you so much for joining us and keep in touch and ayush if you have anything to say in the end or anything to give for the I'm, students you know i'm really i'm very happy because uh, whenever uh, you are taking an online session wherein people are not actually physically bound in a certain space like a room or a conference hall people tend to leave but you know we started out with all, with almost 32 33 people and we still have 18 people online so that is and on a friday night on a friday evening when people tend to just netflix and chill it is a big achievement i think so thank you for uh, you know staying tuned amazing thank you guys thank you for doing that like we expect the same thing for further as well but if you have any requests from ayush making any widget sessions on for the next time or animation sessions on the next time i don't know whether ayush will accept it <laughs> but i'm just making a statement if he accepts that and we are always open to him to share his all the things with the community so if you have any requests feel free to push that up maybe related to or uh, ayush if you have anything as well as well please share it up okay so that's it for today's session and i hope you enjoyed it and we got really good feedback and awesome awesome thank you a few people are joining from pune and various sources this time and really good okay so awesome okay <laughs> thank you guys also please share the feedback with me i'd love to go through it yeah i'll be rolling out a feedback form along with the resources shared with ayush once i get the resources i would be linking up the recordings of this session with the resources and along with the feedback form so make sure you fill that feedback form most importantly just to make sure that ayush made his efforts really good to you okay so make sure you fill that form as how you felt how as how the session made you to feel okay so that's the only request from our side and keep coming up we'll be doing this developer 101 for the for the couple of days further as well, as long as the quarantine begins with us. All right, so that's it for today's session. And thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Yeah, thank you, Ayush. I really, really love the session, like amazing. Thank you, thank you, Ayush, for being with us. Awesome, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna end this call as well. Ayush, if you have any things to share, you can go ahead. Um, I don't want to keep you long. Uh, thank you guys for joining in. Uh, let's go back to our normal lives, bye. <laughs> okay, let's go on Netflix and chill. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye bye. Bye.